Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're making a super simple circle based design. It's a pattern in Adobe Illustrator. We're going to start with the ellipse tool. I'm going to draw out a known size of an ellipse. So I'm using 100 pixels by 100 pixels. My document is 1000 by 1000. Your document can be as big or as small as you like. I just suggest that you use a regular size for your circle, something like 100 or 200, 300, something like that. I'm going to remove the fill from this and so it's only going to have a stroke. I want to make some copies of this so I'm going to start by selecting this shape and I'm going to choose Object Transform Move because this is going to make sure that it moves exactly where I want it to. Now this dialog can go a bit crazy so I suggest that you just zero out everything because that's going to make life a little bit easier. Then you're going to take the size of your circle. Now mine was 100 by 100 so what I'm going to type in for my horizontal and vertical values is half of 100. So you're going to just do 50 and 50. If your circle was 200, then you'd use half of 200, which of course is 100 and 100. I'm just going to click copy because I want the original and this copy. Now I'm going to select my circle again, choose object transform and then move. And the values are going to be sticky here. So that's really good news for us. What we're going to do is put a minus sign in front of whatever the horizontal value was, leave the vertical exactly where it is and click copy. So now we've got three circles. I'm going to select over these bottom two circles and I can do this next transformation by hand. I'll hold the Alt or Option key and just drag these up. I'm going to add the Shift key so they're constrained to a perfectly vertical movement. And I'm just going to move them until they intersect. So I'm seeing those intersection smart guides. I'm going to let go of the mouse button. So now I have a series of circles, but the bits that I'm interested in are just these little bits in here. So I'm going to the Shape Builder tool. You'll find that it shares a toolbar position with the Live Paint Bucket tool. What a lot of people don't know about the Shape Builder tool is that you can use it to apply color. So I'm going to select a color to use. I'm just clicking on that color and I'm going to just drag across the piece that I want. So I want this piece in here. I'm going to find another color and I'm going to drag across this piece here. It wasn't a shape before, it's now a shape. I'm going to select another color, slightly darker one here, and drag across this piece here. I think I've lost the color I wanted to use. Let's just select a different color here and drag across for this. Now I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key and drag through these bits along the edge because I don't want any of those. Basically all I want is these shapes here and I don't want the black bits but we're going to get rid of those in just a second. We'll display the layers palette by choosing window and then layers. Each of these shapes has a black line around it and there's a path for this bit in the middle. Well I'm going to select that and delete it and each of these shapes I'm going to select everything here and I'm just going to remove the stroke so there are no strokes, there are only these shapes that we're working with. This is a base shape so I want to make duplicates of it. I'm going to select over all of these shapes and Alt or Option drag a duplicate away. If I add the Shift key it's going to move perfectly horizontally and I'm just looking to intersect it with the edge of the previous shape. Select over all of these, Alt, drag a duplicate away, hold the Shift key so they're constrained, look out for your smart guides and let go. Now this is as big as the pattern needs to be. It doesn't have to be any bigger than this, but you can make it bigger. And the bigger you make it, the more interesting it's going to be. I'm going to select over these four bits here and I'm going to rotate them. I'm just going to rotate them a quarter turn. So I'm holding the shift key down as I do that so that they're rotated a quarter turn. This set I'm going to rotate three times. And one of these I'm going to rotate as well, just in a different way. I think I'll take it this way. Because I want to break up the pattern of colors. Now at this point, if you wanted to make more circles, you can do so. So you'll have a larger pattern. Select over an entire set. So we're going to take all of these on the left here. Alt or Option, drag a duplicate away. Hold down the Shift key so that they are constrained to a perfectly horizontal movement. For this set, I'm just going to rotate them. If I hold the shift key, they're going to rotate in increments. I'm not really happy with this middle bit here. So let me just grab one of these 
and rotate it round to break that up. Let's break up this little party that the pinks are having in the middle here as well. We could grab all of these across the bottom, Alt or Option drag a duplicate away. Look out for that snap. I didn't see it snapping into position. If it doesn't snap and you're having trouble with it, just delete it and try over again. I'm just going to delete it because mine didn't snap correctly. If it doesn't work and you want to do it exactly, then select over these shapes and choose Object, Transform and Move. And you can move it just using a 100 vertical movement. Make sure you click Copy so that you get the original and a duplicate. The movement is the size of the circle. So if your circle is 100, you're going to move 100. If your circle is 200, you would move 200. So I'm just looking at the base here, just making sure that there's nothing that I want to change the color of. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to select over all of these shapes. You can test to see if everything is lined up perfectly by looking at the width and height of the combined objects. If you've got three rows of circles, which I've got here, it should be three times the size of your original circle. My original circle was 100, so this combined shape is 300 by 300, so that tells me it's perfectly square. Going to the swatches palette, oh, I seem to have lost it. Let me just go and get my swatches palette. And I'm going to drag and drop this in here next to the existing swatches. You can't drag it into a color group, so don't even try because it's not going to work down here, but it will drag into the swatches palette. Let me just put those shapes to one side for now. My document is 1000 by 1000 pixels, so I'm going to create a rectangle the size of this artboard and center it up on the artboard. Target its fill, and I'm going to fill it with my new pattern. At this point, it's really easy to change the color of the pattern. You can just select the rectangle that you have got the pattern in, go to the Recolor Artwork dialog, click Advanced Options, and then click on Edit because this is the fun way to do it. If you want to keep the relationship between these colors, which is basically complementary color scheme because the colors are opposite each other on the color wheel, you're going to make sure that when you hover over this icon here, it says unlink because that tells you that at the moment they're linked. So when we drag on a color, we're going to move everything around. And so we're keeping this sort of almost complementary color scheme. It's a little bit not complementary, but it's mainly complementary. So if you see something that you like, you can just click OK. And what happens in the swatches palette, because we created the pattern the way we did, we've got the original design and this newly colored design. Let's go back to the original. Let's go back to the recolor artwork dialog, back to edit. This time we're going to unlink the colors and now we can move them around so that we can change the colors to suit our own preferences. So I think I might go for some stronger complementary colors really really bright color scheme that but of course we've still got the other two color schemes so we've got three patterns three repeating patterns here before we finish up i have more illustrator training at skillshare.com when you sign up for skillshare you get access to thousands of classes there including over 260 of mine in the description below i have a skillshare coupon for you which is at least as good as the current skillshare offer and typically mine will be better I also have Illustrator training at udemy.com and there's a referral link for each of my courses in the description below. Please feel free to share these with family, friends and co-workers. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you've learned some things about Adobe Illustrator of which you were previously unaware. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.